Hey guys, this is Mike, and you're watching the Wooly Bug YouTube channel. It's late June 2022, and this morning I'm talking to you from Pike County, Pennsylvania. Pike County is nestled just north of Monroe County and just south of Wayne County in the northeastern corner of the state. The eastern border is the Delaware River, and on the other side is New York. I don't believe I've ever filmed here before. In fact, I'm not even sure if I've ever fished here before. But there are a couple of streams that have been on my bucket list and I was gonna try to knock them out here uh, during June and maybe early July if the conditions warrant. This is just under a three mile freestone. The water temps are in the low 60s today. Based on the research I've done, there's supposed to be a mixed population of wild browns and native brook trout here. It's an interesting creek. It is very remote. This is all public land. And we had probably about three quarters of an inch of rain yesterday. So the water's up a little bit. It's not entirely stained, but just enough to probably give me pretty good cover. I'm going to be fishing a dry dropper to start out. As I get up here a little bit and throw a couple casts, I'll show you the pattern I'm using on the surface, which is just a large parachute uh, terrestrial pattern, and I'm dropping a hair's ear off that. So should be a fun time exploring today. No idea what we're getting into. So guys, let's head upstream here and see what we can find. Guys, that's a big old native PA brook trout. Look at the size of the chubby Chernobyl he went after. Hunger fish. guy got me by surprise guys he's not ready for that take
How's that for an isolated brook trout, guys? All the way up at the top of these falls, these fish are native to this area. Beautiful. So since I came up that set of waterfalls, I've only encountered native brook trout, and I think that those falls create a natural barrier to keep the brown trout from disrupting these native populations, which is a really good thing because brown trout get into these streams, they compete with the native fish for food and they tend to push them upstream or completely eradicate them because they eat them. So it's great that this population has its own space and honestly, it's truly amazing. I mean, they've been here forever and it, they've survived droughts and floods and it truly is a fragile resource and that's why when you see people in comments on these videos talking about barbless hooks and wetting your hands, I mean, that's why, because it, it truly is a fragile resource. So we're lucky to be able to fish for them in our lifetime. And uh, I hope the next several generations can too. Okay guys, I gotta head out of here for the afternoon. I didn't get to fish this entire creek and I'd love to come back and do a part two, but I gotta get home. Um, awesome place. The fishing was definitely better first thing in the morning when there was a little bit of cloud cover on. You know, that lets these fish feel safe, especially the brown trout seem more apt to feed but as soon as that sun hits the water, man, those browns just go down. So, you know, 9, 10, when that sun started peeking onto the surface, they were under rocks and just not as willing. Um, so definitely want to get out first thing in the morning. I uh, appreciate everybody watching the channel. If you're not subscribed, I'd appreciate you subscribing. And I uh, hope everybody can get out and catch some wild trout here before summer turns these waters too warm to ethically fish so carry your thermometer and uh if you can't trout fish go chase some bass and carp but appreciate you joining me on this one uh some really interesting um walls stone walls up here i don't know what these are ruins of but definitely a cool place all around um but i got a couple mile hike out so Guys, enjoy your 4th of July and talk to you soon. See you in the next episode.